Okay, here is our first venue, Bell Reco. First venue this morning, and this is the drive on the way in. We christened this venue the Double Wow House. The Double Wow House. Um, and you'll see why the first wow in one moment. Just hold it. Uh, there we go. Nearly there. And here comes the first wow. So this is what your guests do in the bus. Do you, want to, do you want to get out yeah. here, down here? Okay. Imagine, imagine your, your guests have just got off the coach from Barcelona. They're presented with this wow view. As you get off the coach, all you can smell is eucalyptus trees and pines. It's got a wonderful forest garden. We walk through here. And if you can see at the bottom of those steps, that's where your altar would be. That's where your top table would be. That's where you're going to get married. But your guests come in. It's lovely and shady here. Remember, we're now in June. It's very temperate now. Um, the shade would be different in the afternoon. Where the shade's coming from? Can you remember where the shade from is? There. From over here. So it's longer. This is in the shade. So your, your guests are here. And just over here is a lemonade, a beautiful lavender lemonade station where they start to mingle and just wait for... Um, the bride to be fashionably late, um, as is her prerogative. And then just over here, let's say, we have a quartet or a Spanish guitar, uh, amusing your guests as they're waiting. And as we come over here, some people prefer this area to be carpeted. Um, other people just like the plain tiles. We could do anything, any color, anything. Um, and, and here, the center, we have our white chairs or whatever color chair, whatever chairs we want. And around here, we have altar or urns or, or tables um, for the ceremony with either me as a celebrant or uh, one of your friends or a pastor from uh, wherever it is you, you're from. Um, as an aside, the interior of this house is consecrated. So if this were a Catholic wedding, you would be getting married inside the house. And that's the other wow, but that's the secret from later on. Just as one aside, there is um, this lovely little doorway here. It's quite unusual for venues in Barcelona, but this is the restrooms. The first thing people do when they get off the coaches is want to go to the restroom and here's it so they don't have to trek upstairs or anything like that. These are probably one of the most convenient restrooms in all the venues in Barcelona. You don't have to go into the house, you don't have to, they're just right here. Okay, look into me. After the ceremony is now finished, everyone's mobbing you and congratulating you down there. The confetti has been thrown and now it's time for the appetizer which we normally put it on this top terrace up here. But the guests have to get from here, up there. And there's quite a number of steps. If there's anybody who's challenged by this number of steps, we take them in the car around to the top so there's no walking and we deliver them. But now, this, this is an adventure in itself. You're walking into the lovely gardens. And just around this corner, there's a wonderful photo opportunity. This brickwork is lovely, it's gorgeous. This venue was built after the Civil War, so it's not that old at all. It's got that Renaissance classical style to it. A wonderful area for the bride and family photo opportunity. Some great shots. Some wonderful shots from the bride and the groom down there and either from this terrace or the terrace above some some great photo well, let's continue a 
again, a dress against this brickwork. It's absolutely wonderful. This is where they do the photo op with the dress, isn't it? Yes. Well, let me just stand here and show you the contrast. Do I curtsy or something? Yeah. I don't know, or bow. Well done. Well done. Okay. Lots of steps. Thankfully in the shade. But by the time you get to the top, you want a drink. Drink the house in, as your guests would. The fountain at the back is on, making it very pleasant. And this is where your banqueting tables are here, but we don't let the guests stay around here because we want them in front of the house for the appetizer. June, what a wonderful time for a wedding. Um, I'm just hot from doing the steps, that's all. Uh, but it, it's very temperate. Any other time of the year, this is quite exposed and you do need umbrellas, which the house has, um, for the appetizer. We put a bar in the corner. We have high tables and low tables. We have some musician um, uh, situated, serenading you. Um, and you have a jolly good time for two hours. Uh, paella station, ham station, maybe a seafood barbecue station with, with, I don't know, 16 hot and cold appetizers being walked around to you. Yum yum. I'm going to cut now because I need to rest after those steps. Uh, and then we'll pick it up from here to show you the second wow of this venue and you'll learn why it's called the Double Wow House. So, as I said earlier on, there are so many different spaces in this house where you can do so many different things. Now I'm showing you an alternative ceremony space, small ceremony space. Uh, we've done ceremonies here before where the weather was not, was a bit hit and miss. We've done the ceremony in here for about 60, 70 people. Nice and dry and intimate and you can dress this any way you like okay yeah and then we have uh, a pond here which is empty at the moment but it's normally full of water and uh, we've done weddings here for 300 people and we've had tables here and tables up there This is a lovely place to do your banqueting. With the lights going down, we've had bands here, musicians, dancing in the middle, big dance floor in the middle we've had before. Yes. And now we'll go on to show you, oh, well, we'll show you the fountain, yeah. because there's a good, great entrance to your banquet from the fountain. I may have to shout because of the water, but we've had the couple come in at the top and then walk down by the side and come in at the middle. The whole fountain is lit during um, the evening. There's a swing over here, wherever you put a swing, and there's a photo opportunity and people love to get on the swing.
Okay, now we'll cut and we'll go back to the front of the house where we said the appetizer was and go in that entrance for the second one. So we're at the appetizer. Everybody's enjoying themselves. The music is serenading you. Um, people, the, the restrooms are in the house. Uh, so, and the house is open, it's like a museum, it's open to all the visitors, so they can wander around on their own. And, and if I'm there, I take them around and explain some of the house's history to them. Um, so let's go in, prepare yourselves for the second wow. Need I say anything? Get the ceilings in and everything. Again, wonderful opportunities for a photo shoot. Not only is this central space consecrated, so if you were Catholic, you could get married in here, but you can do the banquet in here as well. We've had the tables in there, round tables, and we put a dance floor in here as well for um, entertainment, flamenco, uh, rumba catalana. You've got some side rooms as well. You have some side rooms. Uh, and this is where the boys get ready, isn't it? Yes. This is where the boys get ready. Oh, uh, wonderful photo opportunities. We have lots and lots of pictures of Bell Rico. Used to be the smoke area. This is, well, there used to be the smoking room. Yeah. But there's great light. The photo photographers can do real um, great work in here. Chandeliers and, and whatnot. Um, and then we'll go to the bride's room upstairs. Yes. So we'll go upstairs. We'll do this in one take because it's just so lovely. I don't really have to speak too much because you can just drink in. We, we, we've got some friends with us um, who are off camera and they're always running around trying to be off camera. Um, but we're showing them the house as well just because it's so lovely. There's lots of tapestries. And for Americans, it's, you know, super wow as you don't have this kind of architecture common in America. So, which room is it? There's a kiddies room and there's the bride's room. We'll focus on the toilet on the way out because it comes on sweet. On the way out, we'll focus on the toilet on the way out. Here is where the bride gets ready. Again, great photo opportunities. Lots of emotions, putting on the dress, friends helping out. Lovely, lovely place. Try not to kill yourself, Salvador, please. Sorry. And then after, when you're ready, Salvador. Oh no, we can go around to the piano room. Yes. And just wonderful photo opportunities everywhere. Um, when we've had Catholic weddings and they're marrying downstairs, we have had a, a pianist up here playing, but we've also had friends give um, concerts as a gift to. Uh, the couple. Again, photo opportunities left, right and centre. Right, the last room we're going to show you is the kids' room. So they've got a kind of nursery so you can put babies down and everything, but we think it's a bit um, chucky-like. Um, the colours are, well, let me show you because it's difficult to describe. 
But you'd agree with that, wouldn't you? It's, yes, it's, it's, I agree. It's, it's a little bit... <gasps> well, normally we don't use it. Normally, yeah, normally, but... There's so many places. Might leave a lasting impression on a child. See, Chucky like. But it's a great place for parents if they need space. Yeah. We are now entering the twilight zone. So I suggest we cut and then we'll go downstairs and do the plan B's in the dance floor. Okay. And so we're now in the atrium of the main house and we've got two things to show you now. Um, first off, this, this room the, and, and what I'm just about to show you, the plan B, they are air conditioned. So if it is very, very hot outside, you can do, we've had a one wedding where we did a lot inside because it was so hot outside. We did the ceremony and the appetizer outside and we did the banquet inside just because it was more comfortable for the guests. So now we're going into the plan B um, banqueting area, which also has the dance floor. This is a little bit dated, um, but with some sparkling uh, garland lighting and on the walls, we, you can lift the spirits. All the forest outside is lit with colours, coloured lights. I'm kind of finding it difficult to find words and I'm slipping over my tongue. Um, I don't know why that is, probably a bit dehydrated. The, uh, at the moment, uh, if we were with you, you, we would be talking about, um, in this venue, you get the, the, the choice of the venue's tableware and cloth. So you get a choice of tablecloths, of tableware, of cutlery, um, all depending on your flowers and what you would want. And if you were here with us now, we would be choosing some of this. This is normally done in the catering. So when we go for the trial menus, we'd normally be doing this. But the, with this venue, you actually rent this off the venue rather than the caterer. And then, we don't have to use this space at all, but we do have to use this dance floor, which you can, you have to use your imagination to see a little bit at the moment. They, they weren't prepared for us. But if you see up in the top corner, you see all the lights. This has one of the best sound systems in Barcelona, period. Um, you've got the DJ booth behind these plants. Um, none of this is here. These are all tables stacked uh, for uh, different purposes, but none of this is here on the day. What we do do is segregate off the dance floor so it's a bit more intimate. And here we can have a cake station or a dessert station, uh, plants, whatnot, just to make it more intimate and cozy. We can have some tables around so people can watch, Granny can watch you dance. But there is also a chill out lounge with me. Did you get the uh, glitter ball? Yes. Mm. So the chill out lounge, the, these, these partitions are not normally here. This is the kitchen. Here is a bar. That's the, yeah, this is the drinks bar. That's the DJ booth. And here and just outside, Just here, we have chill out. With uh, some of these sofas inside, you can put around here. And then um, if it's a hot midnight snack that's cooked fajitas or something like that, we have it cooked here so it's not smelling out the room inside. And whenever we have midnight snacks, my favorite is fajitas where they're sizzling um, all the meat and you get to play with your food, with sauces and things like that. There's always a kid. Like you haven't, you've eaten for five hours, you have two hours off with dancing and then you're hungry again. It's phenomenal. We have a queue of people going round and round and round. Have I for, oh, toilets. 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 Restrooms, I should Important. say. Important. Restrooms. You can access this from the atrium as well, the atrium room. These are the same toilets. Caballeros or señoras? Should we go for caballeros? Perhaps 
Yeah, we should have gone for Senoras. yeah. I think. Here we are. I cannot say, sorry. Caballeros. The men's, the. Um, I won't show you that part, that's just where the people stand off and do things. And if we go through this door, we're back into the atrium. And that Senoras. is... Senoras. Oh, no, we've done one lot of toilets. We don't but it's bigger, it's nicer. Okay. Salvador has a fixation with toilets and he wants you to see the toilets. Me, personally, I'm not so fond of them. <laughs> It's big and... No, it's purpose-built. I don't really want to say goodbye in the toilets. Have we forgotten anything? Okay, so... See. Are you sure? Have we forgotten nothing? No. No? How far away the way of this from Barcelona? Is it 45 minutes from the heart yeah, of Barcelona? Yeah, 35 40 minutes, minutes, 40... No 40, more. 45 minutes? Yeah. You're on the coast. The coast is is about five ten minute drive from here, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, that's about it. I can't think of any until I watch this whole video again. Then I'll see the things that I've forgotten. Um, anyway, it's a good starting point to talk about. We'll talk to you soon.